Hey everybody, how you doing today? I hope all doing pretty well. Ooh, this morning's been uh, fine for me. I just, um, fortunately I seem to have done something to my back yesterday, so I didn't go to the gym, so it always puts a bit of a damper on my morning, but that's all right. I think um, I'm ready to get started on some programming for sure. So yesterday we finished up making the collision mesh. I need to update the mouse picking script, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and do the view blocking mesh, which see this is a perfect example. You can see through this mesh to the gray um, behind it. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So what I want to do is make just another mesh that's like in between the uh, the visible mesh that's just be that'll just be pitch black and plug up any of these holes. Um, so to actually, I don't. Well, I hope it won't be that difficult. It depends on if my idea works or not. But I've been thinking about it, and I can still use this point lattice system. But the thing is, with the mesh. Points need to be like here, they need to be pushed down, then here they need to be pushed inward. So I'm going to kind of test something and see how it works. It'll be, um, it won't really work exactly, but it'll give me an idea to see if I'm on the right track, I think. So here where I figure out a world position for a point for the collision mesh, I'm just going to multiply this lattice by, I don't know, one and a half to make it a little more extreme. And I'm going to watch and see if I notice any weirdness in the collider. Because if everything that has an inset is just kind of pushed inward a bit more, then I think I'll be good to go. I guess I need to actually view the collider. So obviously these areas that have zero inset, it won't really be obvious. Okay. Uh, I guess I should have made it more extreme, but you can see that this kind of moved inward a bit. Okay, so I think I might be on the right track. I was just not sure, like, would I have to make the mesh any more... Um... What's what am, am I trying to say? Any more uh, complex than what it is now? Because like, take for here, the points would need to be like right here, and then they'd move up. So I wasn't sure if I needed to have another um, another triangle here that would kind of bridge this margin to the actual hexagon. But, so, I don't think so. But, obviously, let's make this inset more extreme. But not 15, that's why too much. My chat broken. Okay. Okay, now I think I can see. So yeah, sorry if somebody just has been chatting with me. Uh, I got disconnected from it, I guess, but now I think it's back up. Okay, so this looks fine, but I mean, you can't really tell what's going on. So what I really need to do is, okay, so I think I might just try and get these positions 
correct with the collision mesh before I go making a whole other mesh and see if it will actually work. And what's going on right here? Okay, well, it's just the inset pushes out in almost flat, but it still meets the, the corner. Yeah, so there's no really... That's fine, it just looks weird. But, I mean, the blocking mesh will be mostly invisible, so it doesn't really have to look that good. I'm just yeah. So let me see. So really, for every one of these insets, I kind of need to know the direction, and then also their value because certain ones that have zero inset, I would want to at least know the direction it would be in, so I can inset the the mesh. So let me see. Oops. So I wonder if I can... It would be good to make a structure here. Oh, uh, maybe length would be better. This would be good because even we'll saw the direction even if the length is zero. Or I wonder, do I need this or can I really? Might be an easier way. So we would just add this, but then also just add... The negative corner direction. Let's just try that, and then also we would subtract and we also want to move it down slightly. So, I don't know, 0 0.5. And this should be negative. Let's see how this looks. So now we'll have the inset and then also move it towards the center of the hexagon. And then also move it down. If this mesh is how I want it to be, then this is really all that the view blocking mesh has to be. We just need to have a mesh crater that will make a separate instance. Okay, so this is kind of hard to see. Let me mesh. Oh, I was going to do a renderer, but yeah, there's some weird stuff going on here. Um, seems like everything... What is... I'm confused about what... What's going on here, because it's like... Everything... Like, there should just be small hexagons here. Oh, wait. Uh, 
Oh, okay. I see what's going on. Yeah, so this system won't work because... Okay, so for the collision mesh, the points are like right here, so it's fine. But for the view blocking mesh, we'd actually want this corner to end here and then this corner to start here. So it's kind of like the corners need to use the... Well, I guess we can still use the lattice. It's just this corner have to start at the um at whatever block is highest um so yeah we have to do some more logic we already kind of have this but so yeah we just need to find this corner or whatever and use the and base it on whatever block is highest, which we kind of already have to do with the inset. Sort of. Okay, so let's see. Um, this will be a bit hacky, but that's okay. Clockwise height is um, let's see, I will get the hexagon and then we need to get two. 2D index. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do this hacky because I just wanna actually see if it works. So, and then stack length minus one. It's the, the altitude for this. I guess we need to get my own height too. We just okay, we don't actually have the cell index, so and then the anti clockwise neighbor, which I'm just calling it that way so that it's more obvious between our difference between clockwise and anti clockwise here, or because otherwise it'd just be CCW, which is a little too much like this one. Um, so anyway, that is Oh wait. No, it's just the same order index neighbor. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I was just getting confused about all these lines up here. Okay, so this, now I just need to find which one's highest. If my height is greater than clockwise height and my height greater than anti, <clears throat> excuse me, clockwise height, I guess if it's greater than or equal. Then we don't have to do, <coughs> excuse me, we don't have to do anything, but, okay. So since we don't have to do anything, let's actually move this around. So if the clockwise height greater than that, then the corner we'd want to move to we'd want to rotate around twice so it matches up. Okay. 
Okay, and then else if the anti-clockwise height is greater than my height, or greater than or equal, then we do corner. Okay, was this right? So if clockwise height is greater than that and that, so otherwise we know clockwise height is at least lower than anti-clockwise. So yeah, we don't have to test that again. Okay, so now we should use the corner and s the corner direction of the highest block. Okay, so we're getting errors. Let's look. Index out of range. Oh, okay, if we don't have a neighbor, which can happen if... Okay, so I'm gonna need a helper function for this. So private int get stack height. Um, I can actually do this easier. So if X is valid on 2D, then we know it has a stack height. I don't really need to subtract one because it doesn't actually make a difference, but that's all right. Okay, so yeah, if it's out of bounds, I'll just return negative one. So that should be good um, for testing this. Oh, my voice is bad today. Let me get a drink of water. Okay, so I should have finished compiling. Okay, so no errors at least. I could probably get rid of these debug logs while I'm here, but... Okay, so yeah, it looks weird, but like I said, it's not going to actually be visible. Okay, now what is the deal with this point? Okay, so it's still not working perfectly because... Some of these points are like shifted over like that. Wonder if it has did I mess up with the Y? I don't know. Well no, they're still shifted down too. But I mean besides them like here touching the edge. I think everything else will work. Again, the mesh is like really messy, but it's not going to be visible, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, 
Okay, so I just... Let me see. So... Standard position, then I add the inset, which I still need to do, and then this corner direction. Based on whatever hexagon is the highest. And then I just offset everything downwards, but yeah, so I'm trying to figure out where the discrepancy comes where for some reason over here, this is still like right at the edge. It looks like this point, what point is that? Like it was supposed to be here. Hmm, I wonder. Like, let's get rid of this part and see if or how it looks. I mean, I guess the bug has to be there because everything else is simple. Well, not really simple, but everything else worked before. So now it's just shifted down. So for some reason, some of these corners are getting moved downward instead of inward. So I bet I did the corner math wrong. Okay, so let's... Open up one of my diagrams. Oh, it takes a little bit to load. Okay, so the idea is that if we're on corner zero, then the clockwise my clockwise neighbor is this one actually. So did I get this backwards? I get it shouldn't really matter, but yeah, as long as uh, okay, so I guess it's just named wrong. This is actually the anti-clockwise and then this one's the clockwise neighbor. So maybe that was the thing is I got the corners messed up. So this clockwise neighbor. Okay, well no, I actually had four to that. So I think that the math was right before. I guess so. I just had the labels wrong. I guess I didn't uncomment. Okay, let's change this around. Um, I'll just negative one half for now. That's not quite as extreme. Maybe this way we can tell exactly what point is getting messed up. Yeah, so it seems like it's this point is just moving down instead of towards the center. 
Although this one seems to be okay. Maybe it has to do, it seems like it's the only one that's being messed up are the ones that are on the edge of the map. Because yeah, all the other times they're, well, they're moved in. They seem to be moved this way, actually. So I'm trying to find one that's, okay, well, this one is moved inward like that and, that, and it works. So did I, so why would this point be messed up? Also right here, we can see kind of an issue. But I don't know if it really matters that much, but theoretically you could, if the inset was not big enough, you could kind of clip through the edge right there. So it might be better if we like went inward and then moved across. But if I did that, then I'd have to add some more geometry, which we might just have to do, I don't know. Okay, um, hmm. I guess, okay, well the question is, now that I've seen that, is do I want to continue with with this way and then potentially have a problem where it clips through the corner right there. Probably it's not a good idea. But really this edge could just kind of be straight at a certain point. Like on plateaus, you could kind of just have like a a square area, so that way I wouldn't have to have... Because like, this mesh ideally should just be as simple as possible, because it's not visible, but... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the best way to do is. Oh, I had another error. Oh, that's this thing, it's disconnected. Okay, but I guess this way is kind of the worst of both worlds, besides it being very easy to do. Um, it has this weird clipping and it's not the most efficient, so... Okay, maybe I won't use it. The best way to do probably would be to find like these plateaus and then create rectangles like that. Then I'd have to do some algorithm to be able to find flat areas, which is more difficult than it seems, especially for hexagon. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, for now, I think I'm just going to try and do one and not worry about making it super efficient. But instead, try to make it look as possible or as good as possible. And then later on, uh, we can come back. So yeah, we don't need any of this code because, yeah, I'm just not going to use the same system. Okay, so I'm going to go back and use kind of a similar system to the old terrain. And just not worry about sharing vertices um, between cells right now. We can do it, but like I said, the most efficient way would be to go back and find flat plateaus and then join those hexagons together. But um, 
Yeah, that's not as easy as it sounds, so we'll just go with this way. Uh, let me see. What am I looking for? Yeah, this train data. So I'll need to add a list vector two or vector three um, blocking verts and blocking tries, and then we'll just create something that will set this up. So it'll be similar to this, I think. Um, let me see. So fix up some of the stuff. I guess, um, yeah, we won't need the point lattice helper. Let's delete that for now. So dependencies, yeah, we'll need the cliff height and the stack. I guess we'll basically just use the cliffs to create the um, sides. Um, oh yeah, so I need to add my own task here, which will be blocking sub mesh. Okay, so yeah, for the top, um, it'll be pretty easy. We have this get corner index, but I think, uh, so this will be simple. Hmm, actually, now that I think about it. Hmm. Uh, I might be able to share vertices, actually. Well, let me think. Because what I could do, um, well, how I kind of want this to work, is sort of, we want to have margins, kind of like the old system. Do I even, yeah, I need to have the margin triangles too, I think. So what I could do is just say, figure out the heights for each of these, um, for each of these corners. And then I would say, or I guess the, it'd be the lowest height. And then the neighbors would, we'd create these meshes to join up with the neighboring points. Let me see, how do I actually... Probably, yeah, we'll go ahead and have these vertices and the triangles, but then also want to have... I guess this will just be... Well, we can have... How would this work? So I was going to say I just have a, or say the index of the corner point 
for each corner of the hexagon, but the problem is that it can be 2D. So really there can be a top and a bottom for each of these, right? There couldn't ever be three. Let me think. Well, what would happen if these were all different heights? Could this be sloped? Because then I wouldn't have to worry about it as much. Hmm. It's hard for me to visualize, but the problem with working with hexagons is it's hard to model them in Blender, so I can't really use that as a tool. Well, um... I can try. Okay, so I'll add um, cylinder six vertices. And I guess I'll wrote, oh no, this is actually correct. Um, I don't want, well, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. And then I'll have Another one. Be a little bit away. That's okay, and then I want to join these all up into one. So I think that's Control J. Yeah. Now in edit mode, how I want to do this. Let's get rid of. Um, Okay, so I want to make this as much like how it'll actually look as possible. So first off, I think I'll delete these. Oh, um, yeah, dissolve. So it'd be something like this. I guess I should have done this first and then copied the, the hexagons. And now I want to s also delete these bottom. Okay, so now I have a hex. Probably I'll go ahead and delete these as well because I can recreate them easily by extruding. Oh. There we go, that's better. Okay, so let's um I don't want to save this. I don't really want to put it in the game. Back up. Well, let's call this blocking test. Okay, so delete, or I'll create this and then copy it. All right, and so I want these to be at different heights. And the actual height doesn't really matter that much. 
Although I guess I should try to make it sort of evenly spaced. Okay. Um. Okay, and then this one, or one side would be cut. Close enough. So then what I want to do is join those two together and pretend it's level. And this Okay, so it goes something like that. And and then yeah, these two. Oh, we already did. It's just that one. It has the wrong... The normal's facing the wrong way, but... Okay, so... This is how I kind of would like them to work. But I was wondering, do I have to have these walls like that? Or can I actually just have them slope? I don't know. I, I was hmm. it's starting to be a bit more complicated of a problem than I thought it would be. Seems like I shouldn't be spending so much energy on this, but... Okay, well, first of all, maybe before I do all this, I should actually see how it looks. Um, so let's create... just a... plane. Okay, where will I, where will I place the material for this? Because it kind of goes, it's not a mod asset, it's actually just part of the game. I guess I'll just create another one. And this will be the terrain blocking. I don't really think there's any reason that a mod would want to change this. So really this will just be an unlit color and we'll just set it to black. Does it need a collider? All right, and already I know it's rotated the wrong way, so let's fix that. Okay, I'm just going to comment this all out for now. Oh, it's rotated the wrong way, actually. Okay, it was right. If 
first time. So I'm just going to place it underneath that hole that I found and see how it looks. Okay, yes, yeah, so that is better. So if I hide it. Okay, so maybe... Is that really all I need to do is just have a plane underneath the terrain? Because that would be really simple. The only reason I didn't do it before... Oh, it's invisible because I'm looking at it from the back. Is because I was cur or I was worried about being able to see through each of these layers, which you could still do. Which I still am worried about that, so... Okay, so obviously right now you can't see through it, but if I ever wanted to have a, a block where these layers might not perfectly match, you'd want to at least have something there. Or wait, maybe I don't worry about that. And just the blocks have to match. I don't know. Either way, I think I'm spending too much time on this. This should be something simple, and I think I'm really overthinking it. So, okay. I think I'm gonna just leave this for now, and we'll come back to it. So I need to do this, which I want to do for visual, so that's important. And I need to update the mouse picking, so maybe I'll do that now. So I'll just leave this here, kind of. It's just a reminder. And for now, let's not worry about the blocker. I don't know. I feel I still feel like I need to have something there, but I don't know. I think I'll just need some time to think of the best way to do it, deal with it, because it needs to be really simple. But it seems like everything gets way too complicated. Like what I was trying to do here, that's that's way too much for a mesh that's not going to be visible. I think. But I don't know, it might be just what I have to do. Okay, so anyway, um... I wonder if there's another way I can do it the shader or something. I don't think so. Like just make it so that if you look down, well, I guess I could just make the skybox underneath black. And then, but then you could still look through holes here. I don't know. I'll just think about it. Let's move on to something else for now. Um, okay, so... Where's the mouse picking? Okay, so right now I use this old terrain collider chunk to figure out the chunk index, but I don't actually need that anymore, so... This old terrain generator doesn't exist. So I need to somehow have a class that will get this, the terrain, or the owner for every triangle. Which I guess that's just the... Okay, so maybe I could just use the block terrain data. Oops. 
wrong button. Okay, what's it complaining about? Inconsistent. Okay, this doesn't need to be public. All right, so we just have the triangle index. So I can just do terrain dot triangle owners, and then I can just get the triangle index. I think that's really all I have to do. So I'll turn this back on just so we can test that. Okay, we got an error. Where's my mouse key? Not my mouse pointer. Object reference not set to an instance. Is the, I thought that the train block data was available. Oh no, so it just creates it here. It doesn't make it available to the outside world. Which I guess is fair, but, um, so I want that at least the triangle owners to be available, so I guess either I need to make this public or have a different class. Excuse me. Let's do this, so terrain. Collider data, and this will just be another data class. use this, we'll use the terrain collider data. Okay, and then the block terrain generator will now just need to get a reference to that new object. So I need to make sure that the mouse picking doesn't actually run until the terrain is complete. Um, no, because now I think about it. Okay, let's do this. When is it complete? It's complete when the collider mesh is done. Um, and then we need to have another thing. When both of those are done, then we can fire it complete. Okay, so maybe, let me see. Maybe I don't need to have this here. And do I even need to have this? 
Oh yeah, because it keeps a reference to it. Instead this... This class can just have a reference to the triangles. So terrain... Lighter data... So I don't need to create that. Okay, so yeah, this class will just do that. And... Okay, so yeah, now this class won't need to concern itself with the collider. Now I just need some other class to check if all the visible blocks have been created, so let me see. It'll be a lot like this class that just checks to see if a task is complete on all cells. Don't need that. Why did the other one even have the point helper? I don't think it needed it. Right, okay, so this just checks for each cell task. So what is this? Um, we just need to make sure that the deform is done. And I guess this is kind of redundant, but we can say uh, the model meshes are complete. Okay, so it's making sure that the create cells task has finished, but the visible task has not. And so then it checks all dependencies and then it would set visible box. I'm not sure why that's not showing up. I must have. Oh yeah, I forgot to put the namespace. Oh, I don't need that. Okay, so what I should do now is on this mouse pick, I should also make sure that it doesn't try to ask this when the terrain is not complete. So. So really this is mouse pick or cast just shouldn't run all the time. But I think it's created and then it's yeah it updates every frame. Well, I guess this is fine, it's just that if the triangle index is greater than the triangle owner's list, it just won't do anything. Well, okay, maybe yeah, this isn't a big deal because the mesh wouldn't have been created anyway, so yeah. I was thinking that the triangle or the mouse pick could try to pick terrain before the mesh is complete, but the it wouldn't even be able to raycast against the mesh before the triangle owner list is set up. So yeah, again, that's just not an issue I need to worry about right now.
Uh, hi, Wonderful. Thanks again for the hosting. I really do appreciate it. How are you doing today? Okay, so now there's no terrain. Did I get an error or is that... Okay, I did get a... Terrain collider data found. Well, that's probably the least of my worries, but we'll fix that first. What I need to do is go to the map controller and then instantiate that terrain collider data. So still no terrain, but it's saying that the terrain finished, right? Because we're, well, let me, yeah, let's me pick a monster. So what is going on? I guess let's look. Okay, I never created any cells. So start work, on equal null then. Confuse what's this what is this supposed to do? This means if start work has been set. Okay, then it checks to see if everything is complete, so so that should mean that both of these dependencies are done. And then it checks to see if the complete event has been fired. And if not, it adds it and then queues a complete event. I guess at this point, I don't really need to do that because I should just set start work to false. So that way it won't run anymore. Oh, yeah. Let's actually change this to working. So you have to complete. If we're complete, then we just fire this event and then set data complete equals. So what I need to do is to, to delete a flag. I would set data complete and not train tasks working. And this little squiggly tilde just um, inverts this tag. So when you use a bitwise and and then not a flag, then that means it sets everything except this flag. Which, so then when you do a bitwise and, that's the same as saying just take this flag off is what I'm doing here. Um, but I don't think that was the bug because the event was firing because the game loads into the map or loads into the play phase, but the terrain doesn't get created. So I'm not really sure what I've changed that would cause that issue. Uh, maybe this visible blocks create a checker. So it checks to make sure create cells has been finished. I 
don't see anything wrong here. Okay, so if I take this, and if I just comment this out so it never does anything. I just want to try and diagnose the cause of this. Okay, still no terrain, so that wasn't the issue. Something else is causing the system to short circuit, I think. And by short circuit, I mean just end early. Is it... This code. Okay. For some reason that dependency thing is not working. What that should mean is that if complete has all these dependencies, then it would fire the event. Okay, I hope, I think that Visual Studio, or not Visual Studio, C Sharp is smart enough that when you print out a flag enumeration that it will split this up into each individual flag. But hopefully it'll do that and not just print a number or be like Unity and just not show anything. Right, so let's look back up. Um, yes, let's. Okay, so working. And then it says that it's complete, but it's only working if that's true. Okay, so this flag system was supposed to make things easy on me, but it. Oh, this should be or. Okay. So I was doing a bitwise and, and that meant that I was checking for any flags in common between these two values, which is zero. So complete dependencies was zero. Yeah, so, okay. Using the, these flags, it seems to make it some ways easier, but I don't know, it's just me, but I tend to cause bugs. <laughs> Okay, so that's interesting. They're standing inside the block now. But at least... Yeah, the mouse picking seems to work. You can see down here what it's telling me. So block 3, 4, and then go up a row to 12, and up a layer, 77. Yeah, so the mouse picking seems to be working fine. And I can even have them move. It seems like, okay, this new terrain system is shifted, so I need to make all the models stand on top of it, so I think I just need to move them up. Okay, so the model positioner. Oh, so I subtract the layer height before. What is two unit? Oh, two unity does nothing anymore. What is going on here? Get model position. So why do I subtract the layer height? Oh, I guess that's the same thing. So I guess I won't. 
do that anymore. Okay, I guess before the layer was our zero for block was the top. Yeah, now zero for the block is the bottom. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but. Okay, now we're standing on top of it. All right, so now that's all done. Okay, so what else do I have to do here? Okay, I've got to do these counterclockwise insets, which is going to be a kind of big project. Maybe we'll start on that. And then model constraints. This is just kind of, I already have support for it, but it's like if you wanted to only have a specific model for the dirt block, if it's, has no horizontal neighbors, for example, or if it's a certain altitude. I think I have support for that, but I don't actually use it. So that would be here. Yeah, so I have this pick model, but it always just returns the first one. So I can just implement any kind of constraint I want down the line, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let me see. So yeah, there's support for it, but I don't actually implement any. So they implement some. And the view blocking mesh, uh, yeah, I gotta think about that. I don't know, I think I'm, I'm gonna have to do something like this, although I don't really like it. It's just too complicated, but Because the easiest way to do this would be, again, to split it based on cell lines, and then we just have something like that. But that's, like, so wasteful because we don't need any of these extra things. The other way is that I somehow have to keep track of these corner points. Which I guess, in the old system, what I did is I always had an arrangement of points, so I guess I could... ...just assume that again, and then we'd have to find out make the altitudes match up. Uh, so maybe that's going to be how to do it. But I guess if I do that, then I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I think I, I just like to have a day to think about it, so we'll see tomorrow. I guess let's just start on the more complicated insets, which the thing about them is that I have to know the insets of my neighbors, or not the inset, I have to know the stack of my neighbors, what is it, there's some issue, the insets have to match, so it's almost like well, in order to do that, I guess I just need to know the stack of my neighbors, so it's kind of a bottleneck, but... Okay, so what I'm trying to do here... To start up the game to show a little better. Can't really tell on the dirt blocks that much, but on the grass one, since they have a bigger inset, uh, let's... it looks a little weird, like like right here, because it's inset like this, so that there's a slope, but then here there's no inset, so you get this weird shadow. And what would actually, like, normally the blocks would move towards their center, but if there's two neighbors that are touching but then one that's, and then a cliff face on just one side, then it should move along the edge here. 
So in order to do that, I need to know some information about my neighbors. And then it's further complicated by if the neighbors are different types of blocks, then um, they would also have different inset amounts. So I need to either take the smaller one or average or something. I think probably better just to take the smaller one. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let me see. Started doing it. We have this inward direction. That's just so I don't calculate it multiple times. I think just for ease, I might not cache this. I guess it doesn't really matter, but. I really wanted to, I could just have this get corner direction, cache this here in this class as a static variable because it's always the same. That might be the way to do it. That way I don't have to save a reference to it here. Okay, so got the inward inset. Counterclockwise, anti-clockwise. Oh wait, this clockwise and then anti-clockwise. So the reason I'm, again, I'm using anti instead of counter just so that these start with a different letter and it's easier to see. Okay, um, so this is all fine. So what I need to do, how do I figure this out? I guess I need to see the cliff. Let's back up. Okay, so for instance here, I want to see if this neighbor Okay. So I need to know the, yeah, I want to see if this neighbor is higher or lower than me. Then I also need to know this neighbor is inset at this certain point. So it's almost like I need to calculate the insets layer by layer over the whole map. Although, I think, um, I don't think that's going to be feasible, though, because... Yeah, still, we'd have the issue of which side gets created first. I don't really want there to be so many dependencies on this. Like, ideally, a cell could figure out all its insets by itself without having to wait on any information from other cells. So we might be... So what I should do is just calculate for every corner the inset amount for each neighbor while I'm doing it, and I just won't store that data. Because I already just add it here. Alright, 
so vector. Well, okay. I think I'm overthinking it because actually, below me, well, for every corner, it, by definition, the insets always match. So by tracking my own, I also know the inset of my neighbor. So yeah, I'm. I was overthinking that. So I know that clockwise, that's a, but that's on my own cliffs. So I need to figure out. So what data do I need? Again, over here, I just need to know I guess my neighbor's heights. And then if a neighbor is... Okay, so it's like, if this neighbor is lower, but this neighbor is a higher or higher or the same, then we move that way. And if this neighbor is lower or this neighbor is higher than the same, then we move this way. If both of my neighbors are lower than me, then I move inward and if both neighbors are higher or equal then we don't have an inset there's four possibilities let me just so four possibilities clockwise and counterclockwise neighbors both lower Okay, um, move towards uh, my center. Clockwise, higher and or higher or equal and counterclockwise, lower, move along so if the cl my clockwise neighbor let's move from top so this one is higher and then this one's lower that means we move along my clockwise side higher or equal and clockwise lower move along counter or anti-clockwise side and then clockwise and anti-clockwise both higher equal no and or i guess just do not move okay so let's try to implement that and i'll just see what variables i need to keep track of these are my cliffs, so... Okay, well I can actually tell which neighbor is higher and lower just based on the cliff, so that's kind of nice. Okay, so if the layer is greater than the cliff start, then that means... That means that there is a cliff at this place, so let's see. This is the... Possibility for they're both lower than I move towards my center. Else, if um, clock, so if the anti clockwise, oh, let's do it this way. So if layer is greater than anti clockwise, which means that the anti clockwise is lower then I would okay so I don't know why I don't really need all these separate insets I don't think I thought I think before I was going to try to add them together but it doesn't actually matter okay so I don't have a way to get the side direction from a corner Let's 
see. So, for example, this would actually be the same as the corner direction for here. And then counterclockwise is the same. So I can just kind of do something like that. So get clockwise side direction for this corner. Um, let's just use integers. I think if I need the enumeration version, I can deal with that later. So we get corner direction. It's, what did I say? Clockwise is the same as this. So I just switch two over. Oh, I rotate twice. And of course, we've got to um, do a modulo to make sure that we don't go out of bounds. Okay, and then anti-clockwise side direction. The same except rotate four times around. Okay. So this is like... I don't actually need to negate it this time, so get so anti-clockwise is lower. Then I move around the clockwise side. Okay, and here I need to know. Okay, this is the part that's a little confusing. Is I need to know my neighbor's cliff, but um, I'll worry about that later. Let's just make sure this. Math works. Greater than clockwise cliff start. And then. Oh, why did I do a plus equals there? Because I do another plus equals there. Yes, yeah, so that was actually. I was doubling up. So I don't even, I could just do vector three, inset, equals vector three, zero. Yes, that was kind of a mistake. And then, okay, so this is anti-clockwise. And then this last one, we don't do anything because oh wait I see because we're setting this yeah so we have to keep track of the bottom ones because yeah we have to keep track of what's going on so far because this inset is set per per side or per layer Okay, so that means that this should be plus equals. Okay, so let's go ahead. So this is done compiling and see how this works. I mean, so far I don't think, I mean, it'll look perfect here because I don't think we have any mismatching uh, blocks at that match in that specific way, but Okay, there we go. That's actually exactly how I want it to look. Look for any weirdness. Okay, and these stones don't have an inset, so that's why they're still straight. Okay, you can really see here. I think that looks a lot better. This is, it kind of makes a weird shape at the top. But I don't know, I think it adds charm. It looks fine in the game, right? That's kind of hard to see, of course, but... Okay. So now the issue is, for these that I combine them together, I need to make sure that we use 
I need to find the deform inset for the other block and then use the one that has the smallest deform amount. So... Let's see. Five and int. Oh, let's just make this even easier. Do we have cap locks on? Yeah, I do have caps lock on. So vector three, get neighbor. Oh no, this wouldn't be a vector three. Okay, so float, get neighbor, and set length. And this will be, I guess I'll give it my cell index. Um, and then uh, okay, I can convert the corners to the neighbor, so that's fine. Uh, let's just work with integers. Okay, so first I need to convert the cell index to a hex position, and then I can um, turn this neighbor into an axis. So hex position, my hex equals hex position from board index. Oh, and then I need to know the layer as well. So int layer, but it doesn't actually matter for this part. Okay, do I not have a reference to that? No. Okay, and then hex position, neighbor hex is my hex plus X position, axis, vectors, neighbor. And then if neighbor hex, I probably don't even need to really test this, but might as well. So if it's valid, um, well, actually I'm not gonna even do this because it's gonna be confusing, but also, it should never happen because if a something was invalid, then it, the cliff height would be such that um, it'd always be lower than us, so I don't have to worry about that. So now what I need to do is convert the neighbor back into a cell deck, or let's just actually get the cell itself. Well, actually, no, because I won't know the... We don't want to actually use the cell data because we don't know if it's been created already. Okay, so battle board. Or wait, 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 that's not right. So over hex to 2D index. Okay, and so now I can also use Now I just gotta figure out a block just by adding the layer to it. And finally, um, we'll need the prototype. And then I can return database block prototypes, proto ID, cliff. Uh, oh, we have to know the model. Okay. 
So the model, since these models can be random, I do have to wait until it's been chosen. So I guess in order to do this inset, I have to make sure that every cell has gotten its model index is done. Uh, that's a bit annoying, but what can I do? Nothing. So I guess this models indexes, indices. So I'll have to make something that will set this true for me. So we'll need my cliff height. Well, since we have this, we might as well just use the neighbor's stack. Um, okay, so we've got to wait. Let's do it this way. Private, static, terrain, pass, terrain depths equals... Um, model indexes and create cells and then the cell task is just before myself I guess we can leave that even though it's kind of redundant um, so if the terrain is done and then we just have this cell depths as well oops Okay, so now so I have this. So I have the neighbor's cell, and then I can just get. Let's just get the cell because I don't really need the index anymore. Okay. I didn't really want to do this because it introduces a bottleneck, but there's no way around it now. I guess, yeah, I'll still need to get the block because I'll need to know the prototype ID, so... Never. So... Oh, well, I guess I can get that from the stack. Okay, so int... Oh, no. So the stack has the prototype ID, right? So the prototype ID... Is... Yeah. So far, neighbor block is neighbor cell dot blocks. Oh, stack. Clear. And then I can just do something like this. Block dot proto ID models. Block dot model index. Okay, so this will give me my neighbor's index, and now I need to choose between the two insets. So float my inset and float neighbor inset, and we'll just choose the one that's smaller. FF minimum. Um, so what about if one is negative? Probably I want to choose the one that's closest to zero. Okay, so I can't use that. So, mythf abs, my inset is less than absolute value of the neighbor inset. Then I would return my inset. Otherwise, neighbor. Okay, so now we can use both of these to figure out this. So even though we don't always need this, I think I'll just go ahead and get my inset length out because I do calculate it a few times. Okay, so we got that and then choose inset and get neighbor and set length. Okay, so my clockwise neighbor is just C, because it's a side, yeah. And 
exactly, but I actually want the counterclockwise, didn't I? Yeah, because, uh, oh, well, no, this is saying that the counterclockwise is lower, so... Yeah, I'm actually matching with my clockwise neighbor. Yeah. Okay, and then... Same layer. Okay, and then the counterclockwise neighbor is just this. Or, sorry, anti-clockwise. So we add five because we just need to rotate around to here. So adding five is the same as subtracting one. But you always want to add when you do a modulo. It just makes it more um, re reliable. Okay, so I think this will do. It should look exactly the same as before because we don't have any instances of this where we have neighbors that are different prototypes but oh it's not going to work yet because i need to have that class that watches for everything to be done let's see what's going on here oh why would this run Okay, so the dependencies somewhere are messed up. Let's see. Collider mesh creator. Waits for all collider tries. Okay, so does this... Oh yeah, so it doesn't check for the inset insets here, which is where that dependency issue is coming from. Oh yeah, so I had two things here, which was issue. Um, do I have the same thing in the other task? Checker. I do. I'm kind of surprised that didn't cause an issue yet. Okay, but we're going to want to reuse this, so I'll get the whole thing. Okay, so what is this waiting for? Um, I guess this is ready for insets checker. Or wait, let's just call it model indices. Oh, well, especially one curly brace. Okay, we should get this. Well, as long as there's no bugs, we should finish this today, which I'm happy about. So anyway, the cell dependencies we need. Um, model indexes. Uh, cliff heights. Oh, well, I guess I just need model indexes, huh? And then the block train generator needs to just add this. All right, so let's see how this works. Like I said, it should look the same as before. at least and it does look same I think yes yeah, so that's good to see um, I guess I should make this a stone and see how that looks because then it would take the smaller inset so that would be a zero or
Actually, let's make the one under here a stone. So what index is that? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Zero, one, two. So five, two. And then the layer. We can just replace it. Oh yeah, and also in Lua indexes, I need to add one. So I think it's five, two. Or six, three, two, and yeah, let's make it stone. But if I get this wrong, it's not really that hard to fix. Let's go check it here. Okay, I did get it wrong. It looks like it's still grass underneath there. Oh, looks like I added it right here. Oh, you know what? I counted this way first, so I yeah, I transposed it. It should be three, six, two. Okay, there it goes. So if I, yeah, we can see here there's no inset because it's matching up exactly with a stone, but then over here it's still inset correctly. Yeah, so that's exactly how it's supposed to work. Okay, I think, okay, well that actually wasn't as painful as I thought it might be. I guess it did take a little bit to wrap my head around it. But yeah, so, not too bad. I, I still am disappointed that I had to do, create this bottleneck, but there's just no way around it because the models that are chosen could be random and so we can't, create it independently we have to rely on what's decided but I don't know maybe it won't be that big of a deal because it happens early enough that it, they, the game can be creating meshes during this time I think I have separated it so that, that would work because I have the model creator that can run as soon as the model indexes have been set up. It's just a deformer that needs the insets. So yeah, should be okay. So I know this is a little shorter stream. I have still have about 10 minutes, but this is a good place to stop. I think we're actually pretty much done with uh, this terrain system. There are a couple of things I need to allow spawning blocks mid battle but I might actually wait to do that because I think yeah, so let's see I got new block terrain because I think I have disabled block actions until after beta 1 let me see. yeah move block So yeah, we won't have to do that because for beta, I want to go ahead and create a beta one that I can release and um, yeah, anything that affects blocks after the map has been finished, um, I don't need to deal with right now. So uh, yeah, well, well, I shouldn't mark that as complete, but it's just going to be put off. And then I guess we could implement model constraints, but I think I might wait and do that as well. So right now we'll just have one, well, I don't know. We'll just do it as needed, probably, because we can at least to do like random blocks, but, or yeah, small changes. Let's see. 
better block model picking random constraints. But yeah, we can put this off as well until after beta one if I want. So, okay. So we're not completely done with this because I've got to do the view blocking mesh. But unless over today I decide how I want to do it, we might put that off some more. I still need to do a lot of stuff with lighting and I need to polish up egg dino. And then, yeah, oh, well, I need to make the grass and the stone block and finish polishing the dirt block. So I might do that tomorrow because that'd be kind of a fun change that I can do until I'm uh, decided on how I want the blocking mesh to look. But yeah, so the dirt needs needs a little bit more interest, I think, and some colors fixed. And then the grass and the stone just need to be completely done because, yeah, this current block is super boring. Um, egg dino. I'm pretty happy with egg dino. I think if I had a chance, I would redo some of it. Specifically, the egg could use some more tries because, like, right here you can see on the specular, it's very blocky. And then need some more animations, but I don't know. Maybe change colors. Oh, one big thing I need to do is allow mods to um, set up yeah, the lighting ramps, which I don't, yeah, which I don't do right now. And that would just let mods have greater control over how the lights work and the tune shading. That's pretty important. Yeah, we'll work on some more of that stuff. And then, yeah, I need to do better camera control. I need to... Uh, this... Yeah, I need to actually support this so that right now, every player can just make one selection. But I should let you make one selection per monster if the mods want to support that. And then I need to add in changing monster stats and changing if a monster is alive or dead in an action. Um, yeah, I need to deal with this. Uh, some more. Oh, well, I might actually put this off because it's not super important, but... Right now, when we ask the server for a hidden information like a stat, it could pool the requests and send them, like, every few seconds to the other player. Instead of just forwarding it directly, but... I don't know, it's not super important so that could i could see myself putting that off till a later time uh, great doodads yeah we can do that now this is kind of important and i should make some more monsters too it's like i don't know two or three um i don't know we probably won't do this anymore because that had more to do with the old terrain I should make better art, maybe. Oh, this is a big one. I need to figure out how I'll do the skybox and the map edge. Well, the map edge is pretty much already done, <laughs> actually, with this new block train. But I do need to have, like, some, I don't know, water or something. I'm not sure how that will look. Oh, while I'm here, let's comment that out so I remember. What else? So this is Lewis script. So yeah, I want camera control, support the new actions. A function calls at different phases. Oh yeah, this, I need to make sure that you can't set air beneath a block because the game assumes that doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, this is just a small thing. Oh, yeah. This works correctly. I just wanted to f make it uh, easier to use. Okay, that's um, something... Oops. Something kind of simple, but... 
Oh yeah, these the action indicators are kind of plain right now. They're just little squares, and they're kind of bugged. The mod should be able to give models for these. Which we'll deal with that. Uh, okay, and the biggest thing right now for beta 1 is that there's no team building, results, or lobby screen. So that's going to be probably a big, a bigger project. And then I need to do the interface. But... So we still got quite a bit of work to do before beta one, so that's why yeah, I need to finish this train. And we'll just kind of stick some of the stuff um, for a later beta, but okay. I guess let's go ahead and end it. So again, thanks everybody for coming by and watching. I really appreciate it. Um, tomorrow, yeah, we'll just work on some stuff. I don't know, maybe models, we'll see. But I should be live at around noon Eastern, so feel free follow me here on Twitch or on my Twitter if you'd like to be notified when I go live. I have a YouTube channel where I post all my old videos if you'd like to see how the game used to look or just catch up on something you missed. And a Discord server where you can chat with me any time of the day. I'd love to have you there. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. So again, thanks everybody and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.